Hello and welcome to Witchy 101 with guest host Sherry, Drew and guest host Mystical. All Witchy 101 shows will be on a Friday evening at 11pm UK time and at 6pm Eastern USA. We bid you a merry meet and we hope that you enjoy the show and that you are inspired. Don't forget to like and support each other in the room and the show will begin shortly. Merry meet to all. And blessed be. Hello guys and welcome to Witchy 101 with hosts Sherry and Drew and guest host Mystical. We welcome you all, over to Sister Drew to welcome you all as well. Welcome in everybody, my name is Drew and we have welcoming by our sister Rochelle. Welcome in everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Glad everybody can come in. Yeah, we're just going to give you a few minutes, guys, to get in and say hello to everybody. Please share out, let everybody know that we're on. Yeah, let's do that. By the way, while we're waiting, Sherry, you've done an excellent job on your intro. I loved it. Thank you so much. Great, isn't it? (laughs) Hello, Nigel. How are you? Let's get it shared too. Welcome, Nigel. Hi, Nigel on Facebook. And Dobby's and Iron. Dobby's, Iron. Obviously, we've got Sister Drew and Mystical, obviously, because we're on the panel. But, yeah, we've got everybody in so far. There's eight people watching, so anybody that's not writing hello to all of you, please do not feel worried to write in the room. You're very much welcome. That's good, Nigel. I'm glad that you're well. Blessings to you all. So as you can see, me and Sister Drew and Sister Mystical are all in our little witchy dens and magical places <laughs> to do our show. For everybody coming in, this show is going to be every Friday at 11 p.m. UK time, 6 p.m. Eastern USA. So please make sure that you tune in with us each week. We've got lots of amazing stuff coming up, but we're not going to talk about any of that till all of you get in here. Hello, Smith family. Hello, yeah. Kerry. How are you, sweetheart? Hello, it's really good to see you all in it. Yeah. Welcome, in Smith family. Welcome, in Kerry. Thank, Thank you, you for you joining us for the now. first show of our new witchy show. It is first show, guys. First premiere. Yeah. So excited about it's it. It's been a long time coming. It has. We'll talk really about all of this in a little while, like how we've got to get here now and, and, and things like that. We're going to like let you guys get to know us and we're going to try and get to know some of the new guys. A lot of you we already know. Yeah. It just gives yeah. us a little bit of perspective how the how we all started. Maybe he's a relate to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that and we'll, we'll say yeah. like about like what our plans are with the um, shows as well, like what sort of roads we're planning on going down with you guys as well because there's going to be a lot of educational stuff and you learning bits and uh, it's going to be really fun you will see the old is firing up at some point in these shows (laughs) for the people that don't know sherry and drew's been meaning to get this together for some time now and so they finally decided this is the right time to do it and so here we all are 
Yeah. I was actually sitting there the other day and I was looking back to the messages all the way back. And I think it's been like three years this has been on the on the uh, card for me and Sister Drew to do this about three years because when we come when we we started it out twice, but we didn't start it out the way we wanted it to be. We've done it to benefit other places and to try and help other people and obviously the people we were under it didn't really work out or plan out the way we wanted it so we decided that we needed to come together like we'd always planned to do and do it, just do it the way that me and sister drew have always wanted, wanted to do it yeah you know? the shows were they did take off the shows but it just wasn't the right time i don't think no i don't think it was Tell the so like they got popular they got popular i just think that we was in the wrong wrong place at the wrong time i think it needed to be yeah. like this you know what i mean and we yeah, did want, we did want to bring other people in we did want other spiritual people and witches and stuff to come and join us on our panels even though this is mine and sister drew's show it's also the the coven sisters shows it show as well because all of us are going to yeah. put some input into that we've got pups coming up for shows and stuff as well we're going to have guests and things so there's going to be a lot of exciting exciting it's stuff back to basics it's going back to yeah. basics and helping you do your homework so you better do your homework or you'll get <laughs> yeah homework <laughs> is going to be starting um next week Okay, so there's going to be a little bit of homework. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about all of that anyway. But, um, yeah, we're going, literally going back to the beginning. So how we're going to be treating you, so we're going to be treating you like we've never met you before and that you're completely oblivious to what witchcraft is and we're just going to learn you straight from the basics to the beginning and all the way through. Because then for anyone that is lost or doesn't quite know where they are or they need just a little bit more guidance, we can help you through that as well as having new people yeah. coming over as well so and it also works with if you are a you know if you are a practitioner already yeah. it doesn't hurt to go back to the basics and refresh your memory exactly yeah i agree and we've done it properly hey, this Joey. time we actually went hey, into a clan meeting welcome and joy we went into a clan meeting and all together between the lot of us it was in the meeting that night we structured all the teachings. So if there's anything that you feel as people that already maybe are in the craft that we've missed out, then surely let us know, guys, if you think there's something we need to put in there, okay? Because we're doing this oh, together definitely. as a community. Definitely. There's always we actually got to see it. Iron as well. Iron was in our clan meeting, so it was nice to actually meet Iron. So do you want to just start then? That's us nearly nine minutes in. Just get to know us a little bit. Right, so yeah. So what we're blatantly going to be doing is just going to be talking to you guys a little bit about ourselves, how we got into the craft, how we got into our spirituality and why we're here today. Talk to you a bit about why we want to educate you guys um, and open you up more and get you understanding a little bit more. So who wants to yeah. start first talking? Would you like to go first, sis? And remember, you don't need to be you don't need to be wanting to do witchcraft. You can come along for the journey right. to connect to your spirituality, remember. So I don't know, I'm not really bothered to start, to be honest. I think we should give our beautiful guest. Let's a, a just give our lovely uh, sister Miss yeah, Miss the first seat then. Yeah. Well, um, I was just gonna say too that I was almost going to say almost what Drew was going to say, but a little bit different. It doesn't matter if you consider yourself a witch. It doesn't matter if you consider yourself a spiritual person, a spiritual being, or someone that doesn't really, you don't really categorize what you are or how you see it. And you're just curious as to do you have the ability to follow through with what you maybe wanted to do? And so this is, like Sherry says, this is uh, 101, starting at the basics, because a lot of people will say, well, how do I know I'm a witch? How do I know that I have, you know, spiritual abilities? So with Sherry and Drew doing this 101, it's going to bring all of that up so that you can actually figure out 
even if it's what you want to do and how you go about it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to be a witch to cast spells. You just need to know how to do it properly. And we're going to learn you to do that. So we will put you over to Sister Mystical. And if Mr. Sister Mystical could maybe first, like, explain how you got into doing your work in SIS and how you become spiritual and, and what you do um, to help others, that would be brilliant, SIS. Okay, sure. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Mystical Love and Light, which my name is actually Rochelle. Um, I actually was very, very young, 10, 13 years old. The reason I use that kind of a spread is because I could see spirits at the time. I knew I had like a gift. I knew I was given a gift by my creator. Um, but by the time I was 13, then I realized what I could actually do and accomplish. Um, my my mom could do stuff. And so uh, I've uh, told Sherry and Drew before that I don't know that I would say if I was like, if it was passed down to me, but being that they could also do stuff and my grandmother, um, because of a certain prayer that was passed down from generation to generation to the oldest daughter. Now, I'm the metal daughter. And so it kind of went all these generations to the oldest daughter, except for when it got to me. And it, it was given to my, it was given originally to my older sister but she had had uh some issues she had uh like surgery brain surgery and stuff i think my mom was afraid that it was going to be lost through the generations so she went to my younger sister and taught it to her and then my younger sister was like Rochelle, you do so many workings and you deal with fire so much because all my workings pertains to fires with a candle and, you know, burning stuff in the cauldron and all that. And my sister said, I think you deserve it more. And so she taught it to me. And so that's kind of where I went from. Um, it kind of went through a healing stage of helping people. But I came to the point that I would only help them after they would seek a doctor's help and when the doctor could no longer help them and they couldn't do anything about it and you know they're like at ends meet and they're like I need your help that would be the only time that I would help them because that was for me the only way to come to the conclusion that it was me that actually helped them now when I say me I'm not giving myself credit because it was my creator they gave me the gift so all of that is my creator just going through me. So I didn't want to come up and say, well, I helped them if they were still on medication from the doctor. So I would say, no, you do everything you can with a doctor and then I'm your last resort. So we just kind of went from there and we, you know, I would do paranormal. I would go into people's houses and cleanse their houses of any kind of negativity, any issues that they were having and so I do a lot of, I used to do a lot of workings for people. I don't need any more. Now I'm geared to helping people empower themselves. On my channel, I show how to do workings, you know. And um, so that's kind of where we are now. Uh, we have also a channel with all three of us on it on Tuesdays also that you know, we talk about everything spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of, that's kind of my story. So I'm sure I missed a lot, but it's kind of so much to try to remember. <laughs> we'll get to know you more as the show's going anyway. Do you want to go next, sis? We'll get to know you more. Uh, I might cry. Guys, telling my story bring, brings me emotional. So yeah, I'll tell my story first just to get out the road, basically. Right, okay, how would this start with this one? I actually was thinking about this earlier. So, basically growing up, guys, and this is where I am today because I figured a lot out for a first share of my story, okay? So, for now, my name is Andrina. My friends do call me Drew, okay? So, for I was very young, my mum used to always watch us at weekends because my dad went to the pub. So, 
in order to get us to go to bed at the weekend, she would always want to tell us a spooky story. So it always started off with, it was a dark and stormy night. Three friends sat by a fire. And I used to love it. I used to love the, the feeling of being scared. And sometimes as well, I would go to the toilet and I would go out into the hallway and my big brother would turn the lights and things off. And I would scream, but I loved it. I used to hope he would do it and things. So I used to love being scared. I also was thinking back. I used to sit and watch out my bedroom window all the time. My bed was always at the window. So I always sat and looked out onto the the moon. Sometimes I'd sit during the day and reading a book and I'd look out onto the sun. So I was always looking out the window, just seeking whatever I could see, basically. So I always spoke to the goddess as well, which is our moon. So I always, wherever I went and it was dark, I was always kind of just toodle along, talking to the goddess. And really in my mind, I was just talking to the moon. So I grew up, I kind of grew up, I had my family. I had to move back to, to Les Mahigo, where I'm from, because I, I fell out with my first daughter's uh, father. So I moved back here. So through, like, kind of, I, I had my, my first daughter very young. I had her when I was 16. So I hadn't really let my hair down, and I hadn't really had any other partners or anything. So I kind of, when I fell out with him and I moved back to my hometown, I kind of let my hair down a little and went a little wild, let's say. So I met a guy that was younger than me, and I also took my cousin in from a, a mental institution who was getting released. So I took him in because I had a big five apartment. And he was a heroin addict. So through the time, I used to help them out with giving them a little money and I would sort them out and things and just make sure they were okay. But through the time, I started using And it was my biggest mistake. But the thing that I wanted to use for was because I'd see them like then it felt like an escape. So I started to do it too. Um, so I, I ended up, I kind of went homeless. I lost my family, I lost my mum and dad and things. They wouldn't talk to me. I lost my big brother, my big sister and everything. So I was kind of on my own in this world. I was just like drinking every day, getting anything, taking anything and everything really that I could take. Staying in people's houses, it would have me. Sofa surfing, they call it. I had a bed in the woods. I had my quilt cover and things there. And there's a big, if you know Les Mahago, there's a sign, it's called the Knock Hill sign. And it's a, a billboard that advertises the Knock Hill races. So that inside that billboard was my bed. I need where Zach wants to go see if the quilt and things is still in it. So anyway, so I did that and then I met Willie. That's my current partner who I, I have Liam to. So I met him and he had been homeless in London. He had been homeless for nine years. And he was at death doors twice, so his family got called for to go to London and pick him up. So his aunt brought him to Les Mahigo. He's actually for Paisley. So his aunt brought him from London to Les Mahigo to help him recover for double pneumonia and things. So he had been through all the recovery. So I met him and he took me in. I met him after a running joke between us because I chapped the window with my big sisters. I did know him, guys. It's not as if I didn't know him. So I chapped the window and I says, well, he came here. I was actually looking for a cigarette. So my big sister was going to her bed. My daughter was with me. And I, she says, come up to my house. And I was like, OK. So me and my daughter went away up to his house. And he shared chicken pecora with me. And he shared his cigarettes with me and things. And we walked our carry up halfway up the road to meet her go back to my mum's house. And then for then on, I just didn't leave, guys. He asked me if I wanted to move in because he knew I was homeless and things. And, so he let me in through the time I fell pregnant. I fell pregnant within four months, but I lost that baby. So that baby's in the cemetery up at uh, Les Mahigo. And I might be showing his grave one day. Um, so I lost that baby and then I fell pregnant straight away. And then I had Liam. So between that and things, I always, I just got on with it after that. I just got to recovery, took my methadone, got recovery, dabbled, dabbled a little bit and had a little bit of some relapses and things along the way. But... I knew it was because I just wasn't, there was something missing in my life. There always was just something missing. So Kerry had her daughter, had her sweet Zach, uh, they moved to Colburn and her and her partner had an argument one day. I think Zach was two. No, he wasn't. He was just not quite two. Uh, they had an argument one day and she came down here and she got, she, my dad ran her up the road with wee Zach and next thing I knew the phone was ringing, they had found Billy, he had been deceased. 
So it just devastated our family, guys. It devastated us. Kerry couldn't go back to the house. She moved in with me, her and Zach. And it was just, I was in a place where I knew that my life wasn't there yet. It wasn't at a place stable enough to look after my daughter and my grandson. It just wasn't. So I kind of had like a mini breakdown, if you like. And I was lying sitting in my toilet one night, like it was about four o'clock in the morning. And I was just like, please, if there is anything out there, please just give me a sign. Show me the way, just show me. But I had already been trying to connect to Spirit to Ghost Hunt because when Billy died, we wanted to speak to him again. And Billy, Billy was like me, he was dead spiritually. Like, like the, there's a, an app, it's the Ouija board. And me and, me and him always played it. So I thought I could contact him through the Ouija board app and it just wouldn't work. So I started to look at more paranormal on the... And I had already loved to go, all the ghost hunters, the YouTube channel, so I already had wanted to do it myself. It was Haunted Finders I, I like too, but so I was ready to want to do all that. And then I cried out in the toilet. It was about four o'clock in the morning and the tears tripping me, the snow as you do. And then I just, all of a sudden, I kind of looked up and I seen this skeleton figure and I thought, oh my God, I've got to die. But she smiled. And as soon as she smiled, it was like your grandmother hugging you. I just knew instantly that everything was going to be okay. I just, eh, uh, I breathe. I just knew everything was going to be okay. So I woke up the next day. I went to my bed and things, and I woke up the next day, and I thought, right, I'm going to try and reconnect. I'm going to see what that was. So I started turning the spirit box and things on, because by that point I'd been trying to connect. But it had never worked for me before. The spirit box had never worked before. Ouija board wouldn't work. Nothing would work, guys. Nothing would work. And then I turned the spirit box on and I heard Billy. And I thought, it wasn't Billy's voice, it was the word Billy. And I thought, bingo, I've done it, man. I just couldn't believe it. And then from then on, I've just never stopped. From then on, I've researched everything I could research. I've done every, every path you could think of. I've tried to go to the end that I could go to. I've researched how to do this with the classes. I followed a lady in a coven, asked her if I could shadow her. Her name is Cindy. She's from uh, someplace in, um, what's her, Cindy Flanagan, her name is. She's from the other side of Canada. I asked her if I could just watch what she done and things. She did the keeper of the keys for Hecate. And she said, sure, just keep an eye on the group, keep an eye on the, the YouTube channel and things. So that's what I've done for a good three, four months. Uh, she gave me access to a lot of files and things on her website. And I just I just always knew that I wanted to teach people that this could save you. This could save you from a lot of heartache that you go through spiritually, emotional. It's not just the, the practice. Now I practice to help other people. But at first I was practicing to just get myself well, if you like. And through doing candle rituals, showing dedication every day, getting up every day, excited to light an altar, say my prayers to, to, to Santa Marta, just be grateful for being here and being going through the experience and not being unwell. Know where my headspace was, if you like. Having a purpose, it was enough. So I knew I wanted to teach that to other people. So hence where I am today. So... Sister Sherry, it's over to you. And I'm proud I didn't cry. I've got a wee tear, but... <laughs> so, uh, for me, my belief in, like, magic and, um, like, other out there worldly things have been from a very young age. I've been able to communicate, see, and connect with spirits since I was five years old. So... For me, the spirit side of it's always been something that's been very prominent to me. Uh, a bit like Sister Drew, I used to love the moon and stuff. I've seen other beings and creatures that would be associated with uh, the forest and stuff like that. So I've always had that magical element to me that I've always believed in. Um, growing up and being the way that I was, I didn't really have my family to turn to, even though quite recently in life, a couple of years ago, I found out my mum was the same way as me. She was one of these people that very much um, kept it under the belt because of like negative experiences that she'd had. So she never really let on to what she actually was. I do have ancestral 
family way, way back that were witches and stuff as well in the Anglo-Saxons and stuff like that. So there, it goes quite far back. And um, so speaking to spirit and stuff has always been there. I've always been connected to nature. Nature has been one of my most strongest elements in, in my faith, especially in my witch faith. I, I love nature. And um, I guess it all started, I'd say, like early teens, like just going into my teens, like I'd be out in nature a lot. I would be able to see, feel and hear things that other people couldn't, not just from spirit, but from nature itself the ancestors and stuff and i started to research what it meant to be able to see people that other people can't see on being able to talk to other elements of like nature and things and it come up with like witches and stuff like that and it come up about ghosts because obviously at that time being young you don't realize it's a ghost you you just think it's a person because to me it looked like a full apparition of a person it like i'm looking at you guys or sister drew it didn't look like somebody that was see-through so to me i couldn't understand why my mum and people didn't respond to these energies so i started to obviously do research and that's when i come to find out about spirits then i said what does it mean if if you can talk to them and hear them and if you can hear them at like energy speaking from places like nature and that and it come up with things about witches so from a very young age i was very intrigued with witchcraft even though my mum didn't practice it anymore since she was like 18 19 years old she did have friends that she would uh, go around to that were witches and i would very much love watching them making all the herbs and stuff up doing weird little ritual things in the garden and things like that and i'd be so fascinated by it and um even my auntie, going back to my auntie, even though she would never claim herself a witch, she was the one that learned me about speaking and being loving to, to like plants and flowers because they will grow better. They've got feelings, they've got emotion. So, and she was a, a very keen outside person. She had a beautiful garden. And now when I look back at it, she was very spiritual. And I think she was a witch, but she did not say she was sort of thing. Okay, so... Going through life, I had this spirit that would communicate with me and help me to understand about witchcraft, help me to communicate with spirit. She was a lady called Maggie, which I've now come to find out is Sylvia and was my mum's foster mum, who was a witch, mm. which is my foster grandmother. So this lady's helped me all through my life to open up to my abilities, open up to all that I am. But I found myself swaying back and forth from my my faith as a witch when I was younger. I would go off, do my own thing. I would not step away from them, but I would just want to be me. When I really started to come into my witchcraft was when I went through a really trying time as well. Um, I went through several domestic violence relationships. I'd gone through certain assaults. And the, the biggest blow was losing both of my children to care. I was in a place that I was lost. I was walking in the darkness. I've walked the darkness and I've walked beside it, okay? And through doing that, it made me a stronger person because I become so much more connected to my witchcraft. I would seek them for guidance, for help, for strength, for love, because I felt worthless, okay? And I, I, I just, I was lost. So I would ask them for guidance, help me. And they would always be the ones that were there. When it should be your family and people supporting you and making sure you're okay, they didn't. It was the spirits. It was my ancestors in my witchcraft that reached out to me and was like, Sherry, you know who you are. You know that you're powerful and you know you can get through this. We'll help you. So I did. And I, I dedicated myself to them. I told them that I gave myself over to them because they'd done so much for me already. And I'd always pledged that when I come into my faith completely, which has been years now, but when I would come into it, that I would reach out to help others. So like Sister Mystical and Sister Drew, I have done um, like bits for people and stuff like that. But we're all now at this stage where we're 
making things for shops okay because it does take a lot of energy from you when you're doing it personally for people and stuff but if you've got shops and stuff like that you can kind of just put all your energy in put it into the shop and people can buy that you know what i mean so my aim was to, to help other people mm -hmm. but also show other people that even in your most darkest times you can get through it with the love and the respect that i got from my energies and the belief of them several times trying to commit suicide and they pulled me out of my suicide literally i tried to drown myself and i heard them speak to me in the water but it sounded like my son's voice and i shut up and it wasn't it was aura talking to me to try like jog my mind to get to come out of the water i've had several experiences like that now they really mm -hmm. saved me when i say they saved me like they did and um i promised them that i would never hurt myself again and that I would dedicate myself to working for them and to doing good for others. And through doing that, it's found my mm -hmm. self-love. It's found my strength. Mm -hmm. And I don't no longer look at myself as somebody that's not good. I, I do value myself. I still have little bits I've got to work on. I still can be a little bit low sometimes, but mm -hmm. I know who I am and I know what I stand for. And like Sister Drew and Sister Mystical, we want to share those experiences and the most magical thing that we do with everybody else we want to learn you teach you correctly we want you to be able to find your life and your path and be comfortable walking it okay and be be proud to be who you are okay and we're proof that we can get through bad stuff and you know Is it what? Time you believe loving person you can and I am the most nice and loving person you could come across, you know what I mean? So that's how I got into it. So, you know, they saved me, guys, and uh, most definitely dedicated to them. And uh, they're my one and only. They are above all. People get lost in life. And it's just, it's it, to me, it was like a, a candle in the night. It really, really was. I completely took a 360 in life. Ask anybody that knows me. Ask Shell, the one that comes into my chat sometimes. She's been my best friend for 30 years. How much I've changed in the last 10 years. I've done a complete 360. I wish I had a video of me before I started this path, but I don't. But it's, it's just something that gives you focus. It gives you a purpose to thrive for. When you feel that this, guys, when I realised that this all works, was when one day I was standing at the kettle, and my sisters all know this, but this is for the people that do watch this and don't know the story. I knew it all worked when I was making a cup of tea one night for me and my partner, and something fell out of the cupboard into one of the cups. I roasted, I hadn't even put the milk in yet, and it splashed right up and on out and onto the cup, and the way that it splashed up, it splashed onto my arm and right down onto my side and onto my foot. The minute it touched my arm and onto my side in my leg, it turned instantly cold. The kettle yeah. had just boiled. When, if you had, I wish I'd videotaped it, where my slipper was, was stone cold, so, so stone cold. On the floor, there was roasting hot water. So that's when I knew this all worked, that you can protect yourself, that you can get a place in life where you can empower yourself to be better than than you you feel you are perceived as if you like. I still get funny looks in this town as if I'm still a drug user. I'm, I'm still a down and out. I can't even buy tin foil in my local town that I get funny looks. So I know what it's like to still have that that in me. I still help people daily that's still in that lifestyle, but it gives you a, a goal if you show dedication. To this, and it might not even be to light an altar every day, even if it's just for you to sit in the morning when you wake up to feel your Zen place, to feel a place that you can find within you to help you push on. That is really what it is. It's really a place in you that's to like, rising up out the ashes, if you like, like our phoenix. It's a place to give you a rebirth, to give you a new focus, a new outlook. And guys, it really does work. I wish I could share with you half the things I used to do in life. And you would know I'm a completely different person than I used to be. It does work. It's intention. Mm -hmm. It's belief. 
It's belief in what you're doing and it's belief in yourself. You are your own magic. Nobody else is your magic. Your tools yeah. are not your magic. You are your magic. We can sit here. We can educate you. But you can take parts of that away and make it your own. This is what we want you to do. We don't want you to take everything we say and copy what we're doing. What we want you to do is take elements and make your magic your own. Make your own words. Make your own rituals. We'll learn you to do all of those sort of things, of course. But it will become your own magic in the end. And we are going to thank empower you. For being you. So fun. And of course, we'll share our stories with you because, like any other being, yes. we want to show you that we are just normal people. We're normal people and we have been through things as well. And it's just proof that you can come out the other end if you've got that belief and that love in what you do. And you can completely. So what was you going to say, Mystical Sis? I was going to say oh, we were empowering them. Empowering most definitely, yeah. Yes. And like you said, Sister Drew, it's not about lighting your altar every day. You could just sit on your bed and really contemplate and think about what you would like to bring to light and maybe just talk to them. They listen to you. You don't have to light your altar up for them to listen to you. If you've got that love and that faith in them and you trust in them and you do things for them, they will listen to you at any time. Okay? Yeah. So when we say dedicate, when don't I think I'm going to get up. Wait. When I first sat and worked that night, I didn't wake up to an altar, guys. I woke up the next morning very confused. I wondered what had happened. I knew I had a purpose, but I also had something in my mind. What if that was something that wanted to harm me or something? But I always looked back and I smile, and I can see her smile to this day. I always look back on that, and I feel that was the minute that I connected to my higher self. That minute that I, I, I had to be vulnerable, I had to put down my full facade. I was a tough girl. I was the one who looked down and punched your face in, you know. I had to take yeah. down all the barriers and stop trying to be the tough I am and ask for the help. And the minute that I did that, I took down all the layers. And guys, I connected. Like, it felt like an instant, but it obviously wasn't. And then the next day, I really thought about it. I started to research what it was. And then slowly, I just, every morning, I kind of said a prayer to her. I said a thank you to her. And then, but then I gradually built up to doing an altar and things. But it did start with that thought of thank you. And everybody can do that. Everybody can find that place within them. Yeah. And there's always energies that can help you to do that. The, the thing with witchcraft yeah. is, is witchcraft has been given such a, a bad name that a lot of people that are so scared to entertain it. And we want to be here to show you that witches are not bad people we're people that are probably more spiritual than some religions that you know okay we're very spiritual the only thing that makes us the reason we're witches is because we're connected because we have a we have an understanding of the universe we have an understanding of what matters in life okay that we're a witch is a wise person someone that is connected we are not curses and eat children and all this stupid stuff you've heard people say about us you know what i mean like we we want to be the ones to stand there and go, witchcraft is good. I do like to read a little bit. And even coming down to some of the, the energies that we work with, when you come across some of the energies, they look rather scary, okay, because of the way they look, but they're not actually bad energies. It's just how they're formed, okay? And that's what this is all about it's about educating you it's about finding your path but it's also helping you to learn about energies within the craft as well so that you know what they stand for because a lot of people would look at some of these energies and be like i'm not entertaining that it looks like the devil or it looks like a demon and and they're not they're not they're completely the opposite so we're just here to say we love witchcraft and we love being witches and we're witch proud okay Sister Mystical will fight that and say she's a spiritual being, but she's a witch who <laughs> casts spells, okay? But she's a spiritual being, okay? Um, we want you to be open. We want you to be honest. We want you to be able to talk about anything that concerns you, worries you. Like Sister Drew said earlier, bring in ideas. Maybe there's things you want to know about that we can talk to you about. Like, this show's not about us knowing everything. This show is about growing with you. There's going to be things that you're going to come across that we know may not guys, know. We can research and study and bring that out and do that with you. It's not about knowing everything. You know what I mean? We can all 
It's about doing together. this together as well. Yeah, we are. And we're going to have a lot of people. What one person knows, one another people. person might not know. Yeah, and that's why this these shows are good. You guys, we're going to try and offer as well. Say that again, sis. It's okay, we go. I was going to say, we're also going to as well want your input. So you guys are impo as much important in this as us. Yes. We want you to be able to tell us that it's helped you, that maybe something else. So you have got an input putting this yous, we're doing this to help and even if he's are as one of the sisters said even if he's are already practicing or spiritual everybody can benefit from it because it may be help you to connect a little bit higher it may be also help you to work with other energies who knows so i ask you all to come along for the journey see what it can do for you see what it can also maybe do for you if you want to open a shop and things, because we're all, well, Sister Mystical has had a shop for a few years, but Sister Sherry and I just new into this, trying to get our stuff yeah. pushed out. So you just come along right. with how we do it, how we thrive on it. We've all got channels. We've all got channels that you can go and look at individually as well, but it'd be really good to come in the show because we can educate you, but you also learn and meet other people. And I agree with you, Lady um, lady of um, Dracurite. I hope I've said your um, name right. That is one of the worst things about witchcraft. Not a lot of people that's... do misunderstand us, yeah, and they, yeah. they class us all as being Satan lover. I will tell you, I do not love Satan. I do not follow Satan, and I do not do Satan's work. Exactly. Neither do my nice. sisters. Hmm. Definitely If not. you come along for the journey, even the ones that want to know what witchcraft's all about, come along, watch the show, sit in the background and see what we're all about. Because, guys, what no, it really is, it's really just good people want to help through Mother Nature's own things that grow in, in her world. The energies of the moon, the planets, energies of people that's been here before us and done this job. You know, it's, it's about connecting to your ancestors as well. Remember, your ancestors aren't just from hundreds of years ago. Your ancestors could be your gran, your papa your granddad your, your aunt anybody really has had an influence on your family tree and these people exactly. through wanting to their bloodline to succeed will help push you out they'll help guide you in directions that you maybe didn't know you wanted to even go in but they know that it's for your higher good and things and, and it's, it's fun. A lot of people might think this is a bit serious, like, oh, this is a bit deep. But it really is fun as well, getting to see all the little things that you see. You see so much amazing things that you couldn't even start to tell you. It is, it <laughs> the is first phenomenal. time I heard the trees talk, I thought I came straight into my clan group and I said to all the sons, I just heard the trees speak. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. <laughs> well, you and these things... I'm sorry. Go on, mystical. Go on, mystical. Oh, I was just going to say, um, when when we show you what we do or how we do it, we're not saying to you, this is how you have to do it or you're doing it wrong. That is not us. We're we're giving you like a basic platform to work off of. You take like like uh, Sherry said. Well, it's this way. I keep pointing the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> um, you take what Just you want. Up. You leave what <laughs> you. You take what you want. You leave what you want. You make it yours. But we're giving you a basic platform to start off working with. Okay. Yeah. So don't ever think you're doing it wrong. When I'm showing people on my channel, um, and I'll I'll sh do every single step and show them. Then I'll get a message back and say, well, I don't have that. Can I substitute so-and-so? Always remember, if you think of a substitution in your head for a certain item, chances are that's your guide telling you to use that substitution because it's about your intentions. And if it's your working, you can't screw it up. If it's your working, then that's how you want it to be. Exactly. No one can tell yeah. you what's yeah. wrong. Because it's yours. There is no right or wrong way to do witchcraft. There is no right or wrong way. All we really say we is just do a bit of study. Just study, guys. We all study about what you say. 
Let us see the we I think it's in this one. We have got Wait. it all structured, guys. It's all been structured to show something. We're like we're all we love what we do so much, okay, and we love helping people that we want we want other people to be able to benefit from that as well. And let, let's face it, we've had people come in our chats that need help with certain things or they don't know how to do with something. These sort of shows are really going to help you to do that. Like we, um, the sisters said earlier, you don't have to be a witch to cast a spell. You just have to have belief and respect when you're doing it. Okay, that's all you have to do. You can follow. We're going to learn you everything from the beginning. We're going to learn you about how to know if you're a witch, how to connect with your spirituality, how um, the altar is um, cleansed, how it's set up, what each tool is, how you do your blessings and your cleansings. We're going to learn you about different herbs. We're going to learn you about different candles and feather colours. We're going to learn you about everything from the beginning so that when it comes to you actually doing your practices yourself, you're, you've got that guide to go by. And like Sister Mystical said, and like I said earlier, your magic is your own, okay? And there is more than one plant important, okay? Because researching in like your oils researching in your herbs and stuff is something you should do because there are lots of different types of oils and herbs you can use for certain spells and rituals and and things like that so you're always going to have new things coming through hello evie sweetheart and um we're just gonna make you comfortable in what you do we're gonna make you comfortable and we're gonna have it so that you know who you are hopefully and um just don't be scared to speak out like sister drew said earlier this show is about you guys we've not set this show up for us we've set it up for you guys you know what i mean like we already know what we're doing we already cast spells every day we already do all of this stuff every day this is for you and this is to help you so take advantage of it, it guys, years. in a good way <laughs> but you know take advantage um, yeah, sorry. Like Iron said, she is here in spirit. Yeah, no, Phoenix is going to be really better than it, bless her. Um, no, exactly. We don't entertain the devil and stuff. You know, we're all about the light, okay, and about good stuff. And um, we, we we just want to make a stand for who we are and um, for our ancestors. Just to get really used to understanding who we are as well, yeah. yeah. A lot of years I've been coming into our rooms for a lot of years. To be honest, we've all got a bit of witch in us. We all do things associated with witchcraft. Right, I'm not being funny or nothing, but every year you put a Christmas tree up. A Christmas tree is associated to witchcraft. It's a ritual. Yeah. It's a ritual. Yeah, yeah, exactly, sis. A Christmas tree comes from witchcraft, and nearly every household in the world puts a Christmas tree up. It's knowing those things and embracing those things and being comfortable with those things, you know, and um, that's what we're hoping to be able to do, like make you comfortable, make you more understanding, because, like I said, we've all got a bit of witch in us. We're all spiritual, and this land was our key home once. We all lived off the land once. We didn't have these big buildings and internet and everything. We lived off the land. Okay, so this is learning you to go back to your roots, back to the olden times, before all of the internet and cars and all this stuff went on. Natural, natural way. It helped me so much, guys. Honestly, I've got no idea. It helped me from my soul to recover to my mind, to my body, to my spirit. It's just, it helped me so much. I just know that people can benefit from it. I know that there's people out there probably struggling that watch our shows every week. Maybe even the, the watch everything, just hoping that they connect to something. Guys, it, can, it helped me restructure my whole life, my whole family's life as well. And I also do ghost hunting, it's my, the same as Sister Sherry and Sister Mystical. And in order to ghost hunt as well, I had to make sure that I could connect to spirit. Because everybody knows if you're on drugs or alcohol or something, you can't connect, you can't go. No. 
that can be difficult. You can't get your vibration up enough. You know, so I had to do all that. To, a lot of spirits, it was maybe uh, in recovery or something when they died. Maybe they wouldn't like to speak to me if I was standing there and they knew I had drugs in my system or something, you know. So you've got to get all that to a place where you know your own mind and your body and your spirit. And then slowly but slowly doing the work, showing the dedication to the energies around you, even to your higher self, to show that dedication that you want to connect to better, to better, to better. It just works. It just clicks into place and you'll start seeing the signs. Ask to see the signs and you'll see them. All the little signs you'll start seeing. You'll start, if you want to start, I've seen crosses everywhere just as a, a little uh, reassurance. Okay. Ask to see crosses to be your reassurance key. There's lots, so much you can do, and it will help, I promise. Just stick and to with the us person, and see if you like. To the person in the room that asked the question up the page, you were saying, like, if you knew if you knew a person that came to you and they were having problems with somebody that wasn't nice, how would you sort the problem out? The, the, the answer to that you can do you can do spells like blocking spell um removal spells and stuff like that but a lot of it like we said before is about intention if somebody's giving you bother or giving somebody you know bother once we've learned how to do the basics you'll be able to just do it by putting your intentions or writing it down putting a bit of oil putting a bit of the herbs that you've learned about and you'll be able to put that intention out there and learn how to do those sort of things there are keys and answers to every issue we have in life it's um we don't really want to just go explaining it to you and you try doing it we would rather educate you and learn you correctly from the beginning so that when it comes to you doing that you're going to do it correctly mm. okay and you're not going to put yourself or anybody else at risk mystical you're muted sis yeah <laughs> i'm pulling a drew <laughs> <laughs> Are you first, of all, first of all, sorry everybody I had to disappear. I've got the fireplace going, so I had to go add some extra logs onto the fireplace. But I just wanted to also add in too, because you can easily do like sweetening jars and stuff. But before you go into doing any kind of workings, what talk to the person first instead of all hearsay, yeah. somebody said yeah. they were doing this or doing that or saying this or saying that. Talk to them first. Always try to settle it first, just the normal way, before you start yes. doing any kind of a work. And that's my opinion. Oh, definitely. It, but, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, we you we can, don't just don't cast oh, yeah. spells out for the for the fun yeah. of it. Some sometimes <laughs> the situation can be more oh, without. But not in my neighborhood. <laughs> it don't be going. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I feel, yeah. These would be pretty full. Dob in a jar. Is there any other questions? <laughs> and we'll get into that jarring people, okay? And yes, jarring people is a thing. We really will learn how to yeah. jar people. I promise. And you'll get you'll get around it, um, um Kelly, sweetheart. You know, everybody has a bit of a hoarder when it comes to your yeah, witch yeah. stuff. Like yeah. at the time when it feels right, you know, you'll get rid of what you've got. Maybe at the minute you're not letting go oh, of Christina, stuff because you need it. Maybe gonna come up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm laughing. trying to see if there's any questions. <laughs> oh, we already read, said that thing about the same and stuff. We all really get to know each that. other as well, but does the sisters all be coming up? Yeah. You'll yeah, get there's to meet all the new sisters. Sister. Definitely. Remember, if a lot of these have been this for a while, you will remember that Sister Sherry and I have done this twice before. We won't mention the companies or the groups or any. We won't give them that power, but we have done this before. No. So in order for us now to do this, we've had the two reruns. So this can only work. And we've got beautiful mystical with us as well. Who we needed, we needed everybody that, that is in the clan group that's going to help us. And the CBS group, which is Uncle Danny's group, Chasing Bones Inspectors. They're going to help you all to to do things the way they do things as well. Look, Uncle Danny's going to shed so much light on a lot of it for you, you will not believe it. That's what he helped me place a lot of it together. So because he let me to place a lot of it together, I know that his words are going to benefit a lot of yours. So if this, that's the way that yours all fit in. The clan group was made up for a reason. It was made up with people that I knew in my heart 
wanted to was spiritual they wanted to keep their craft in their life they wanted to learn more people didn't really know what i was doing probably just adding people <laughs> and things but there's a lot of people in there that i just knew was going to help so many people and through all our sisters promise you she's a learn something she's a learn something even if it's just like a candle <laughs> and uh Kerry, everyone becomes stuck once in a while in the craft and stuff. That's just part of life, sweetheart. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with this, this will hopefully help you to open up a little bit more. Uh, because believe it or not, when you come into the craft, like okay. a lot of people will start out with one sort of category or status. Mm -hmm. And we end up with so mm -hmm. many different things that we do. Like, I'm an electric witch because I bring a lot of yep. different elements of witchcraft in from different places. I'm an electric witch. I'm not just one thing. I believe in many things. So that's what we are. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we believe in multiple gods and goddesses as well. We don't just believe in the one. So, but we're going to learn you yeah. about all of that. So you'll be able to find where your path is. And you may find through doing this, you may find other elements you didn't realise you really mm -hmm. are involved with. So, you know, empath and sensitives have a small fraction of witchcraft within them. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah. Empath mm -hmm. and sensitive. Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's like everybody. It is the way of nature. So it's in us all. all it really is in us, is in us all. We are nature's children, okay? All of us. So we've all got those elements, like Sister's saying. So it's just learning to use them correctly and uh, being in connection with them. Thank you for coming. Right, that's Sister Drew. I'm just going making sure we're not yeah, missing good. anybody's um, comments. I'm electric, so basically a sponge for everything. Love anything new to add to the practice. Always told my medium, always told by mediums that I have a gift to buy, to buy have always suppressed that side. Sometimes you have to be careful with certain people you go to because not all of them are legit. You really do need to look into to things before you completely take somebody's um, opinion and stuff, sweetheart. But um, do your own research. Yeah, do your own research and stuff. Everybody's got some sort of gift within them. It's just some of us are not. We want to know the best book I read. Mm -hmm. Say that again. The sis? best book I read. To in order for me, then I'm just trying to explain to the guys, in order for me to start doing spell work and different things, I had to read a book or try and understand it, that it could actually happen. So I read The Idiot's Guide to Alchemy. And that was the best book I ever read before I started because it gives you a perspective of the science behind the herbs and the way that things can work. So if you read the books about alchemy, That'll put magic and things into a bit of perspective for the people that need the science. Because I needed the science behind it. So yeah. read that book, guys, and that'll show you that it that it, the science is there. You just need to know what to do and why it works is well, the way it works. Yeah, alchemy, um, even looking into things to do with like the moon and stuff, because believe it or not, the moon and the mm -hmm. sun are a very, very important mm -hmm. character in witchcraft. They are what give you the energy most of the time to do your spell work. You will find mm -hmm. that a lot of the stuff you work with, including tools, will need such things as being, you know, um, cleansed, being empowered and things like that. The enchantment yeah. of your tools come from the energies of like nature and the mm -hmm. energies of um, the goddess um, the maiden, the moon, and also the sun god as well. So there's just so many different things. And there's things that they can give us that's really good in our spell work as well, such as things like your moon waters and your sun water and, you know, storm waters, all sorts of things. You're going to yes. learn so much, guys. You're not going to you're not gonna yes. know what's on you. So make sure from next week onwards, you've always got your pens and your pads because write down what you're being told. Yeah. You know I mean? And the shows will be there to go over and over again as well. We will yeah. put the cards and things on the shows, so you'll be able to, to follow them really well. And the, the homework and things that we say is it won't be crazy homework. It'll be to just to help you connect and make sure it yeah. gives you something to practice. To next going back to school, guys. Things. It's not going back to school where you've got to do hundreds and hundreds of pages of work. Just 
just little bits, you know what I mean? Just to show us that you're understanding what we're saying and that you're getting it. And it helps us to understand yeah. your way of working and your character as well. Because the more we know about you, the closer we can connect to what could be mm -hmm. right for you. Okay? So... In writing it all down will help you. It'll help yeah. you go back to it and see how far you've came. It'll give you an understanding of what you're thinking and, it, and things. Even the most professional, like ourselves, we forget it's things. Choice, yeah. so it's really it's good to have a journal to go back and read over, especially if you... Because you, you, you can have days where you're really busy and you've got all these workings you're doing and your head goes a bit blocked. You've got your journal to go back to, haven't you? So, what's, what's that system? Yeah, I think, Joy, you could you could benefit from it. Do you want your highlights, Brother Joy? Joy was saying, with the gift angles. I have, it puts me in the present of evil. Oh, wow. I try and find and stop evil that men do, but in doing this, I find that I am depressed and I am very alone. Can magic help me stop this? You need to have <laughs> a cleanse yourself. I think, do you want to answer it, Mystical? I wanted to say to address that me mentally, he needs to be in the right mindset. Okay. I know Drew yeah. and Sherry never do curses. Okay. That's mm -hmm. against them doing curses. Me, I'm going to put it in perspective. Okay. Because this is going to address what um, Joey is saying because he gets depressed when he tries to stop evil that men do remember this okay sometimes a curse isn't necessarily it's not necessarily bad to protect the innocent some people yes. need to take their own wrongdoing to stop their abusive ways for uh you know toward you or others the word curse itself, people think you've got a voodoo doll, you're stabbing it with needles, and you're hurting some innocent person, okay? What you're talking about and what I had just said, for your peace of mind, remember, the word curse isn't necessarily bad in the instance that you are trying to protect the innocent. Because the way that I see it is if... if my creator gave me the power and the know-how and is working through me to stop some of these evil people because right now the way the system in the world is being run, a lot of people are getting off with harming other men, other women, mm -hmm. other children, uh, animals, okay? So you have to be in the right frame of mind to say, this is how I'm going to do this to stop them, not to, not to go after them, to harm them, but mm -hmm. to stop them from creating and hurting other people. You know, I'm talking about, you know, the torture. You use a blocker. All of, yes, all of this. Yeah, you just do your blocking, stuff. wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. You just do your blocking, your removals, your banishing, things like that. You, we don't do work that um, hurts anyone, even so, if it's the person that sent it. So, yeah. yeah, so it's not necessarily bad the way the word is written, curse. You yeah. are protecting the innocent, the people that are torturing animals or torturing babies. They can't protect themselves. There's exactly. men and women that can't not protect themselves. So it's sometimes if you're given a gift to step in to help the situation, to take care of the situation, to get the innocent away from this evil person that's doing this, then that is a good thing that you were given the gift to do that. Okay. Yeah. So when it's when you're saying you get very depressed, it's because you, you are probably feeling like the word itself is taboo and maybe you don't feel right doing it. But if you do it in the right way, it's a good thing that you are yeah. protecting the innocent. Yeah, you yeah. got to have a positive mind. Magic. Positive mind. Yeah, mindful magic and things can help you banish 
the concern. See, guys, we're going to get into all this. There's so much to it, honestly. There's there's so many different avenues of things. A lot of people will think, oh, no, you can't work with that. That's black. That's dark. But it's not. It's just dark isn't evil, you know? There's so much deepness to it. And we're going to address all that. We're going to address the curse work. We're going to address all the black magic, tip taboo and things as well, and all the different energies. And also remember, if you're if you a Christian and things, don't feel guilty in doing this because for all that we all have, we're own deities and things. A lot of us still believe in God or a God. Yeah. So don't, and, and there's also Psalms. You can use the Psalms and things and spell work. Do you remember everything is energy, so come along and we'll get into it all. That's all I can say before I go on a big rant about it all. Yeah, yeah. just come on and we'll get to it. When you're, do, when you're doing this, you have to remember, you're not calling on the evil side to do something. Maybe you're no. calling on Archangel Michael. Maybe you're calling on your guides, your guardians, your ancestors, that, you know, whatever angels you want, you know, the source, the ether, the, the universe, that's who you're um, calling on the good side to help. Okay, so you have to make that connection because you're doing it for a very good reason. You're not just out to curse people because they cut you off in the middle of the road and, you know, <laughs> you want to do something bad. That's not what, you know, what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm not being funny about doing doing curses We're all and setting, out, setting curses out on people just brings you not good things. Okay. You know, anything you put out that's negative always comes back on you one way or another. Okay. So don't do that. Just stay positive and connect with the good energy and believe in what you're doing. Because obviously, if you're sitting there and you're doubting yourself when you're doing the craft, and that can make you feel unwell because you're not connecting correctly and things like that, you've really got to be sure in yourself and comfortable. And hopefully, by coming to these lessons, that's going to help you to do that. We can't sit here today and tell you, go and do this, go and do this, go and do this, because a lot of you clearly are trying to find who you are and trying to understand it. Yeah. So with us doing this, you'll be able to, you'll probably be able to see it for yourself then once you're open and you, you're realising things. That's why we've all structured it to show seven because at show seven, seven sorry, it's just seven, seven. So at seven. show seven, so we've seven. Yeah. <laughs> I've not done it. <laughs> we will be at charging altars and things. So at that point, we've kind of stopped there uh, and then we'll reassess where you all are. How far yeah. on these arm things? And you'll love the show. You'll be waiting in the, the wings for the show's going live at 11 o'clock. I can promise you, because we've got it all yes. ready. Because we're doing we're doing about seven shows, seven shows a season. So obviously this one, um, the first one we've we've introduced ourselves. So we've got six shows this time. So it is yeah. going everything from learning what types of witches you are all the way through to the tools, how to cleanse your altars, how to use mm -hmm. your altars, all of the basic that you need to know to become a witch or a spiritual being that can help their self, mm -hmm. we're going to learn you in those six weeks. Yes. Then, like Sis said, we'll review it. If there's anything that you guys feel you want a bit more of a brush up on or you feel you need a bit more information, you can tell us under the videos or privately. And then mm -hmm. we want to go into – then, obviously, each season there'll be something more. So season two will be learning about the herbs and starting to work with the herbs. Then season three will be doing the casting and doing this and connecting to oh, nature. And all because we're not just going to be doing witchcraft. We are going to be learning new elements of shamanism as well. We're going to be learning new shamanism as well. Past is amazing. Get involved. Come on the shows. You want to come up? Yes. Just message us. Just say, can, we, can I come up today with you? Uh, can I come up Friday with you, Sherry and Drew? I'd like to talk about this. Ask of course, question, our right. arms are open to all of you. Yes, yes definitely. Just be you, guys. Brother Louis has a good perspective on things. I hope you share more, Brother Louis. We do want... Uh, there's a lot of very talented and amazing people in the, in the rooms, okay? And some of you are very scared to come up onto panel. Don't be. You know us well enough now. Yeah. You don't have to have your camera on. You can turn your camera off. Come tell the more you do it, it, the more comfortable you become. We've all started out very nervous. Sister Drew used to be really nervous going on camera, and now she I does really well. I wouldn't myself. 
I have to have Sister Sherry with me or Uncle Danny with me. Uncle Danny yeah. had to come on I with me when I was looking for to find us. I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I won't come on without my bed. sisters there. <laughs> <laughs> you will eventually, I promise you. Just be... Just I be got invited to... Sorry. Go on, uh, sorry. Go on, Mystical <laughs> Sister. I'm just going to say... I ne never want to come up, but I always say, if I have a live coming up and they don't make it, I'm going to reschedule it because I am not going to do it myself because the reason I come up now is because Drew, like, I'm not going to always say she pushed me. She encouraged me. She encouraged me. <laughs> she encouraged me. Okay? Because I'm hard of hearing and I watch people's mouths. So when they talk, I'm looking at their mouths. <laughs> Sometimes we sound like we're talking over each other, but that's just because they're there's a delay and we think there's nobody talking and when we open up her mouth and the other ones you know yeah. it's <laughs> finally coming through but we're not being rude and to each other or like that yeah. <laughs> Joy, stick with like, us. i promise you you'll learn you will learn guys and we've we've been waiting so long oh, to do wow. this so it's long been no idea the people that's been here from sister sherry and i met know just how much sister Sherry and I clicked but other people got involved in it guys and other people wanted to push their narrative onto us the way they thought that we should teach and it didn't work well, one of our no. sisters the other day when we said that we were starting up the show and stuff she actually started crying mm -hmm. because she what she's been with us from day one and when we first said we was going to do those shows she was so excited about it and obviously through people's problems and the way they treated me and Drew, me and Drew had a few little issues that wasn't anything to do with our, us. It wasn't our faults, right? And um, we, we kind of went our own way for a little bit and done our own thing, okay? And then obviously when we come back, the sisters were so happy. And this certain sister, when we spoke to her the other day, she started crying. She's going, I've been waiting for this for so long because so long. there are so many people that will have been looking forward to this. And like we said, we, we did it twice and it was getting popular, but it just was yeah. not the right time or the right place. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. They weren't structured. They weren't structured no. by us. We, we went in a meeting. The divine we've done it. The divine the divine 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 was it wasn't there. Mystical's the key. No, She's the key exactly. to kind of keep it all into place, I feel. <laughs> Because and I'm like, different than y'all. Even though we all think the same, we are so different also. So we yeah. come with different perspectives on how things are done or how we see things, but yet we do it all within the goodness of our hearts. Yes. And we do connect really well. We do mm -hmm. connect because... I, I will, I we'll give you a little story, okay? I'm not going to go into detail about who it was, but... I had come to my sister's, okay, and I uh, was like, I need some help for someone. Some of my sisters, like Drew, Mystical, and some other sisters, we all stepped in and said, yeah, we'll do this, we'll help, and, and, and things, you know. And we got on a, a, a we got on to a private video, and um, we'd not spoke anything about what we were doing. I just gave the basic information I needed to give. I didn't say how I wanted it to go or what I wanted to do. None of us said anything to each other about what was going to be going on. And with that connected, even though we're individually different, with that connected, that when we come into this, actually onto the panel like this, but it wasn't live, obviously, we all had everything set out the way we wanted it. We didn't even have to say anything to each other. We It was kind of just like boom, 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 boom. We all done just done it automatically. We didn't have to say anything. We didn't have to do anything. And I'm telling you, we had fire alarms, sage spitting, we stripped electric <laughs> circuits, my laptop blew up and caught my bed on fire, my candle nearly burnt my house down. Believe me, magic is real. Okay? <laughs> and Very dangerous as well, sometimes. <laughs> the energy and, exploded. And we've also done more more like a loving way as well like for instance sister drew oh, yeah. a couple of years ago her mum become very seriously ill she was on the we would say death's door we didn't think she was oh, going to be coming out of it, out of it. 
and um, Sister Drew decided that she was so scared and worried. And she goes, sis, I, I need your help. My mum's in hospital. She's in ICU. She's really bad. I don't think she's going to make it. Can, can you please help me? Can you do some spells? So we did. We went live. We didn't really let on to people we were doing the spells, but we were at that time. I'm telling you, not even six or seven mm. hours later, Drew had got a phone call saying that her mum was sitting up. She was doing really well. Within that week, Drew's mum was out of hospital. Now, these doctors and nurses stood there so baffled because she shouldn't have survived that. And that's what I mean. When you've got the power, mm -hmm. the belief in what you do, you can make anything happen. Anything. Yeah. It's all in here and in yeah. here. You know what I mean? So when she comes, she well, goes, no. goes, I'm not doing really well now. And um, she's, she's yeah. come round. And I was like, what? Because she was really bad. Nobody should have been able Guys, to recover that. When the virus hit, it was when the virus hit. She got no resuscitation twice. And I yeah. had said to Sister Sherry, can you please do prayers, do music to do prayers? And I was going to involve Uncle Danny as well, but Sister Sherry was going live that night anyway. So she did all the music and things and I just just put my screen off and I just went on the mall and did some candle magic and things and then we, we sat after and you guys were there, you were all there, you just didn't know what we were doing and then after it, Sister Sherry and I had, were on the live and we were just like, kind of doing different things and then the next day my mum said to me that it was sort of, that's not true, it was my one of my family, I think it was my cousin Linda said that my mum was out the, out the ICU and the, the, the doctors and nurses didn't know why, and I didn't tell my cousin why, why, because she didn't know what I was doing at the time. And then it wasn't until like four days later she got released from ICU into a normal ward, and then two days later she got out. She got home. Oh no, sorry, she got out that next day for the ICU, and then four days later she got out of the hospital on a normal, out onto the emergency wards on a. I don't. It was it was amazing, guys. It was amazing, well, and then we she got out of the hospital about two days later. So happy yeah. that she recovered. So so happy that she recovered, and it's just it's it's proof that magic does work when you've got the belief. And you guys are capable of doing things like that if you want to learn. Okay, and um, somebody said something yeah. in the room. Hang on, who's that? That's Joey. I'm the best to do that. Well, I love you know the power of prayer already. That's what. Is that? Yeah, because like with me, a lot of like I do my spells and stuff like that. Yeah, but a lot of my magical power comes from my dance and my music. When I play my drums, when I do that sort of thing, my prayers as well, because I'm very good at speaking out. And I have had people come to me going, "Shelby, could you come up and panel and do me do me prayers?" Because for some reason, my prayers and my 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 prayers through my music as well really works. It does, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yes. Remember, music and oh, powers you. And if you've got somebody that's specifically yeah, playing music, yes, yeah, see you, Phoenix. I'm sorry. Phoenix is in your oh. sis. And if you've got somebody that's about when I'm alarmed, playing I'm music, not on the <laughs> what was crazy, guys? Honestly, honestly. Yeah, that was. That one cost Jerry a lot of money. Oh, yeah, we definitely. wasted a lot of that devices. That will never be my laptop, that literally, never we were sat on live, and my laptop sounded like a bomb. It was ticking. And I was going, what is that noise? Can you hear that noise? Or is it just me? And they were like, no. It was like, what? They go, yeah, we can hear it. And then like, I moved it, and I sat back, and I was looking at it, and it stopped. And I was like, okay. Touched it again. Started tick, 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 tick. I was like, what the hell's going on here? He's <laughs> going up. The, 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 the bed caught on fire. I'm flapping on the string, going, Oh my god! And then the laptop just gave out literally. Bang, <laughs> it was never the same again. <laughs> it was crazy, yeah. It's been so much fun, guys. A lot, yeah. And it took her a while to have to replace it, too. <laughs> oh, it did, it did. But I, you know, I'm here now, I know, but it's mad. But magic, magic's real. Magic it's is real. real. Guys, you've really got that is. And you, you, you've got that willpower to use it. It will, it will work for you. Just do it the right way. Mm -hmm. And always remember, never take and never to not give back. 
If you're going to come yeah, into no, this, you know, see how always, to always know. give back to them because they don't yes. have to help you. Mm-hmm. Remember that. Drum work is so powerful. I've been to some amazing drum circles mm-hmm. recently. Very powerful. So they are. Yeah. Drums are yeah. very, very powerful, yeah. And I is this the story actually, of doing with the, all, all that? So remember and check that out, guys, because she will go through doing that as well on the channel. Yeah, and I will play. Maybe like one night, I will play you some of my drum and stuff because I've actually got a new instrument turning up as well. It's it's, it's known as a lyre oh. harp. It's a little harp. So you got. I've got because I'm really good with the music. The music seems to really hit you through meditation or anything. So yeah. I'm trying to bring all these different elements in to help you. And uh, I don't know how I do it, but for some reason, every time I pl- pick up an instrument I've never played before, it sounds good. It's weird, mm. and people seem to connect. So. I am trying to do more and more, and I will learn you about that because drumming isn't just good for the spell work, it's good for protection. You can do actual protection stuff and remove things from your house doing drumming and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just by the rhythm and speak, you know, there's loads you can do. A drum's not just for music. Yes, Phoenix, we're sending you prayer, sweetheart, and the family. Sister and brothers, if you could please say a prayer for my whole family. Would you like me to do one up on here, sis? Yeah, definitely, if you want, Sister Phoenix. Away earlier this afternoon, he was my favourite. What's his name? Manuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Manuel. 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 I like a candle for him. Okay, I'll do a little prayer. Just a okay. Little... Yeah, okay. Thank you. Let me just light up. Let me light a candle up so that we've got a bit of. Um... I've While she's while she's lighting a candle, I want to say for everybody that when you when you're doing a prayer or working a spell, whatever you however you phrase it. Remember that every word means something. If it comes down from inside you, from your heart, way down, and you're filling the words, if you just blurt out words, that don't mean nothing. It has to mean something inside of you when you are saying it to make it actually happen, to give it life, in other words. Yeah, what's our power? Remember that. If just think how your feelings can be hurt. It's somebody saying a hurtful word to you. See that power? Remember that because words have power. So if you remember that in your spell work as well, and always remember to say harm to none. No matter what you're doing, always have that intent after it. Harm to none, no matter we'll what you're you. No, Joey, we're going to learn you how to be able to do basic spells and stuff. We're going to learn you to do that, sweetheart, in the um, shows. That will be coming up at some point. So if I could ask all of the chat just to put their hands together for Phoenix, please, guys, and for her family, because um, she lost her uncle, Manuel, today. So if we could just put our hands together for them while I pray. call upon you our father our lord jesus and i call upon you the merciful energies of mother earth and mother nature and i ask that you come forth in this moment of hardness and sadness and that you be with phoenix and you be with phoenix family as they go through the suffering of loss of their uncle manuel i call to you father and mothers and i ask that you take brother emmanuel into your hands and take him to the light into a place of rest and goodness. I ask you, father and mothers, to put your hands of healing upon Phoenix and the family and help them to come through the difficult and struggling times. Allow your energy of love and guidance to be with the uncle. Help him to walk into the light. Help him to walk to your energy of you, father and mothers, for he is your child. Be with those that are in pain and suffering and in grief and help them to be stronger and help them to help each other through the pain and the time. 
Father, as the merciful Father you are and the powerful Father that you are, bring the light upon him and bring the light upon them. Mothers, as the powerful energies of nature and the universe, I ask you to surround your loving and birthing arms around them and around Emmanuel and help them to come through this pain. For the worry and pain within them is in the uncle, Emmanuel, as well. Help him to understand his new way and his new transfer. Allow him to stay with his family, but in love and in light and in the arms of you. I pray to you, Phoenix, and your family, and I send you love, blessings, and healing from God and from the mothers. May their merciful and loving energy be around you and protect you. May the merciful and magical and loving energy be around Emmanuel, and I send you to the light, and I send you to your peace, and we bless you with the light of love and holiness. Amen. See you, see you. This is my will, as I will it, so mote it be. This is my will, see, see as I me. will it, so mote it be. This is my will. Are you going to keep the candle burning, so sweetheart, so that it can just burn for him and burn for you guys? I'll put this onto the other. Okay. Welcome in, MCAT Paranormal. Hello, Hello everybody. Cat. Yeah. Please go to bed tonight. Think of poor Thank poor Phoenix and the family. Oh, Just do a little prayer for her. Oh, yeah. If you can do that, that would be absolutely amazing. When you just before you go to bed, just just do a little prayer for them and that because sometimes everybody needs a little bit of love, sweethearts. Of course. The power of prayer is amazing, guys, and you'll get to learn that as well with the ones that don't already find that concept and their, their, their being. Because I know a lot of people don't get it, but it works. If you ever go to Facebook a lot of the time, you'll see that a lot of people will go on there and they'll ask for prayers. It really does help. The more people that pray with that intent to help that person that's asking, it really does put a space, that will close the space between that and healing. It does. And prayer is a very powerful thing, if you believe in yeah. it. And uh, I've been very good at always doing it. And like Sister said, you know, we will learn you to do all of that. And be able, you know, in the end, you'll be able to write your own prayers up. Because believe it or not, you don't have to follow the prayers that you find online or in books either. You can have your own words of encouragement. You don't have to follow a book or a guide. You can have your own words and stuff. It's what you believe in, what makes you feel powerful. I use Sister Mystical's prayer when I cross the spirits yeah. over my Sunday. And I use Uncle Danny's a lot of the other times. Amen. So, so much be. Yes, sir. Yes. Guys, we are going to try and keep the shows to an hour and a half, just for a bit of structure for everybody. And we are now at that hour and a half. And Sister Mystical, the poor soul, is in the cold room tonight. Keep the fire going. <laughs> it's probably remember, 25 questions. degrees in here. <laughs> Get the questions in for us as well in the comments, the people that watch this back, okay? Yeah, don't forget to, like, if there's anything you want to know about, just write underneath the status. We do want to say thank you for all of you for coming in. For 15 people coming tonight. It's really much appreciated. Please make sure you put the word out about the shows. Every Friday at 11 p.m. UK, 6 p.m. Eastern USA time. Don't miss it. Every Friday, guys, with us. And there's going to be lots of really cool stuff yes. going on. And obviously keep an eye on us on our channels when we're on <clears> through the week as well, guys. But we do love Yeah, Sister Mysticals Channel Tuesday, guys. So come and check us up on there, definitely. But we do love you and appreciate you. And we hope that um you're looking forward to the shows in the future mm -hmm. and all of the magical stuff. But it's really we're gonna good. stop it here. Yes. And we say Merry Parting to you all. And I'm gonna play the intro out. And thank you for watching Witchy for 101. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Love you all. Blessed be.
Post. Sherry, Drew, and guest host, Mystical, would like to thank you for joining us on our show, Witchy 101. We hope that you join us next Friday at 11 p.m. UK time and 6 p.m. Eastern USA time for the next show. We hope that you have a blessed evening. Thank you for watching and we will see you all very, very soon. A merry parting to all.